welcome back to our student presentations. We will continue this afternoon's session with Colton Pilch. Colton attends Ankeny High School and lives in Ankeny. He is the son of Catherine and Kenneth Pilch. The title of his project is Gale Force of Games. Oh, oh, hi, like I said, my name's Colton Pilch from Ankeny, and I go to Ankeny High School. My project was called Gale Force of Games. So there's some stats to start off. The people born from 1995 to 2012 are known as the iGen. Kids about ages 8 to 12 spend about 6 hours a day on screen, and your average teenager spends about 9 of the 15 hours that they're awake in front of a screen, kind of like I was. But in the other 6 are in often in school, often on a screen, learning in class, making presentations, kind of like this. Social media has been shown to increase loneliness. While yes, it's a great way to kind of connect with your friends and family you don't get to see very often and live farther away, you are seeing and comparing yourself to their best lives and the way they want to be shown, and then you just feel inadequate. Either you feel left out or like your life doesn't compare to theirs. Video games are, yes, a primary online activity and can be social, but there has been less and less kind of in the same room working together towards a common goal or in the same place celebrating each other, victories and defeats with each other. And as VR becomes more and more prevalent, there could be a time where everyone's in the same room with headsets kind of ignoring each other, just kind of losing that human contact. Mental health impacts of screens, uh, spending about 31 hours a week uh, versus 19 hours a week increases depression, anxiety, and along with many other social phobias. Also shows to be linked with dropping grades along with worsening relationships. Internet uses, excessive use of the internet leads to being twice as likely to be depressed nine months later. The goal of my project uh, was to build community by bringing people of all ages together through board games to help combat the addiction to screens. My project had three f main phases. The first one was to raise money and collect uh, game donations. The second one was inviting people and advertising the game day itself, along with actually hosting it. The third one was expansion and continuation of the game day. First phase, I met with uh, one of my local librarians, Sherry, uh, just to make sure I a, could have the game day there. <laughs> Thankfully, it was allowed. Uh, and just to see if there's any other general restrictions that they had or any concerns. Uh, there wasn't really anything, and she was very excited and very helpful with the entire process. I then emailed game publishers, uh, and I got 17 games. Uh, now I emailed 17 companies and I got 16 games from them. And that was just, I was blown away kind of by just the start of the process. It's the first thing I did and it was a great kind of way to start off on a high note. I then talked to 25 local business owners and I got three games donated along with uh, some, uh, some monetary donations. Uh, then I emailed 25 to 30 of businesses in our local chamber of commerce. I didn't get anything. I don't know if it was me, it was them, it's probably them. But uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna go with that. But I was kind of disheartened, like I was just kind of wondering what I did, and then, but th then I talked to my, my other mentor, Dr. Chad Lynch, who is a local business man in our community, along with a very avid gamer, and he suggested that I write short to the point uh, letters and email them to the people. So I mailed, wrote and mailed 25 letters to businesses and individuals, including politicians, and I got five donations of cash. <laughs> That's out of date. Uh, <laughs> which was kind of very nice. It was a way kind of to get back up and kind of get back on the bounce, step off foot, and just kind of get back into the motions. Uh, the second phase, I was getting the word out and advertising, hosting the games days. So I started off by walking in our town, some, what we call the Summerfest Parade. And I hit about 200 flyers, and it was about three miles of the sweatiest part of this entire project. Air conditioning is nice. Uh, I also, when I went to the local businesses uh, earlier, when I was seeing getting donations of games and uh, money, I often, if they couldn't donate something, they would be more than happy to put up a flyer, help advertise, just, and that was, and so I left those. Uh, along with, I invited as many people as I could personally, 
uh, I some, just told everyone I could, I saw about it, and I, I created a Facebook page for my project, and I thanked people who donated, donated games and money on it, along with also advertising whenever a game day was. Uh, also, the library and Ankeny website and the calendar both have when my game day is on it. The game days themselves, I've had three so far. In the first one, I had been told that the inaugurated library events don't always have that many people. So when to have 26 people show up, it blew me away. It kind of validated all the work I'd put in, and this was like, wow, this is a thing that's happening. <laughs> so, and 26 people, that weren't all my friends that volunteered to come. Most of them were people that came on their own. And at that, for the first one, we had 30 games. And then the second one that followed up in August, again, having 22 people show up and then having 58 games, which just kind of validated the re results of the first one. And this was like, this was a great way to start my project for me. Then September came, and four people showed up, counting me. At first, it was kind of very disheartening. And I was wondering, like, were the first two just a fluke? Was this, this kind of what it would be? But then after I kind of stopped and thought about it logically and analytically, and the one then was just the, that was the first one before, first one after the school year had started, along with my game days are on Sundays, and that's when often a lot of soccer and football games are. So I had talked to my, uh, the librarian, Sherry, and she, and we decided just to keep them on the same day, and if it, but if it kept happening, then just either change the day, change the time to see if there's a better time for people. Now, W the game days themselves. Someone walks in, uh, I kind of in there to kind of help them kind of be able to come in, kind of be greeted, and just be able to see, hook, connect them with a game or a game in progress. I'm often playing games, but I will, uh, but that's partially because then I can offer them a place in the game if they don't necessarily can't start a game. Also, I get to introduce many people. In fact, there's more dice than just six sided. This one has 20. And I'll, Along with introducing them to new dice, they also get introduced to the emotional roller coaster that comes with rolling it. That's a two. That's really bad. Uh, my project is really important in building relationships. Whether that could be allowing families to have a time where they're not running to practices, doing schoolwork, just here and there, everywhere, and just able to sit down, get off their phones, and just connect with each other. And also build new friendships and new experiences. A lot of people aren't very good at initiating, like breaking the ice. So having like the joint new experience of a board game together, we're already kind of forced to work together and interact, is very helpful at starting that ball rolling. And that just kind of leads to this then being able to be more natural and connecting with people and building those relationships. Along with a couple of times, uh, a couple of families asked me where they could get the game. Uh, and I was able to point them in that direction, which help, A, kind of helped people who donated the games, and was like, hey, thank you for donating, and just kind of give that business a re even more of a reason to have donated at the first place. And then also, the, then the family could go home and have a game night whenever, and not just once a month when I'm able to have the game night. It could be Friday night, whenever is convenient, and just kind of continue that cycle of building those relationships. Uh, my current results, I currently have 64 games for ages 8 and plus, and 25 to 30 games for ages 4 to 10, along with about $210 on cash to continue buying games, replacing old parts, uh, whatever is kind of needed for that. Uh, my third phase was to continue the monthly game days and possibly increase the, like, if, like we said earlier, if the Sundays end up not working out, like continuing to change the day, or if demand increases to have a second one a month, just continuing to see what people want and uh, what they need. Along with, I was asked by the other, another children's librarian that she, a couple people were wondering if this would become an after-school activity. And in that meeting, we had decided to see, we decided to let, let the normal ones continue and see if that, A, that demand just kept, it was still kept up and was there after a couple more of them. And like, and just, yeah, just to, like, it's a, more of a goal for the future and just able to point of expansion when not, we have the okay, more capability and demand is 100% there. Along with my community is building a new library, which will have a lot more space, that, uh, especially a lot more space that is able to be play games in. Our current library, it's great. It has some tables, but there's not, in the library setting, you're supposed to be kind of quiet and calm. And the tables are kind of interspersed in the library, so there's not really a place where you can kind of go and play a game and kind of bond with people and just really play the game. You kind of have to be like quiet and 
So with the new library, it would allow for more of that in-library checkout uh, for to, to occur, along with just kind of more games whenever, not just my one Sunday a month. The benefits of my project, the library has 90 plus games with more to come. Uh, the community is increasingly connected, and I personally learned that in-person contact, whether it's the more personal touch of a letter or talking face-to-face, -face, definitely yielded better results than kind of the standard business email. On connection with President Hoover, Hoover was uh, raised in the Quaker faith, uh, specifically in the Quaker values, specifically the ones of family and friendship. Uh, my event, I hope, fosters those ideals of family and friendship, along with kind of being able to wrote them. <coughs> uh, President Hoover had a passion for the welfare of people, especially children. He fed the people of Belgium when they had no food and provided for them. And my event provides people with something they don't have. There's not really a place where you can go to kind of connect with people necessarily in any community, in mind particularly. There's not really, it's a need that everyone needs. Everyone needs friends and people to bond with. And I'm able to provide that to people that necessarily don't have it. Uh, President Hoover said we must master the difficult art of working together. Uh, games often are cooperative. You kind of have to work, to build those social skills. And so in playing games, you ma start to master that art. He also said our job is to find common ground, not widen differences. With, through the common ground of games, I hope they're able to realize all people are people, and we shouldn't let our differences of ethnicity, background, skin color, socioeconomic status be, be cause a divide between us. On the uncommon man speech, uh, I was asked on this. I'll pick a lot of games. And he asked me, he was also on a podcast. And I hope I, me being on it, I can be an inspiration to people and show that they can do this or anything if they truly set their mind to it. Any questions? The people who came, were it more families or friends or a combination? It was kind of, of a mix. I, there were some groups of friends, and there was a couple of families that came together, but sometimes like the group of friends would kind of break up and to play with a family and just kind of to play the game and get like the people needed or just kind of just kind of play with some different people. So it was kind of an intermix. And the ages, uh, the, the games were tailored for different ages? It, and yeah, the games taste. were, the, the my game day, my main one was more towards eight and up, but we had some, like, we had some younger, like, babies come, and I, it worked, and it was more than happy, and to me, like, looking back and looking at it and thinking about it, I'm kind of glad that we were able to kind of accommodate that, because so, then the, they can be growing up in this kind of environment, positive, and just have it kind of start to positively impact them already. How do you see this continuing on if you're no longer there to facilitate uh, it? The great thing about my uh, project is it doesn't really need necessarily a dedicated head. It just needs somebody that's able to bring the games out, especially in the new library, if there's a place that can kind of be open, and especially if it's like in library checkout. If the, necessarily a game night can't be, the games will still be there for people to, be able to play and check out. And I, it's a very easy thing. Like There's always, when the game night is hosted, there's a librarian there. And so even if there can't be a non-library person to do it, they can still help do it. It's, yeah. How are you marketing the game nights going forward now that you've had the first couple? So you got the parade for the first go around mm -hmm. to help get the word out. Are you using anything like Facebook or social yeah, media? Yeah, I have Facebook. Uh, speaking of which, there's one tomorrow if you guys want to come. Uh, you're all welcome. <laughs> Uh, and I will hook you up with the game. If you don't think there's you, there's a game for you, there definitely is. You just need to give it time and find the right game. But and on the more continue of marketing, I'm still telling people about it. Uh, we're still like, I, we have a Facebook page that I kind of go out. Um, I've, I've sent out flyers uh, still. Like the, the uh, when I sent the letters, that was later in the project. So it kind of was helping to like kind of stack the different levels of advertising and spread them out a little bit, opposed to all concentrating at once in, when it was very in the forefront of people's minds at one point in time, but then later when it came closer to the game days, they kind of like more in the back and they forgot about it. So we spreading it out and that I'm still continuing to advertise. So Colton, what's your favorite board game? Uh, mine, Diplomacy. Ah, all right. uh, don't play it with any people you, who you value your friendship. <laughs> Thank you very much, Colton. Thank you.